This is Twit. <sighs> and Leo. Yes. Zoom Zoom purchased I Keybase. I never did get you to try it, did I, Steve? No. Nope. <laughs> Too late now. Well, I guess you could still try it. They didn't kill it, but uh, it doesn't well, look good. They effectively killed it because they bought the brain trust. Right. Which is what, and the reputation, which is what they wanted. Last Thursday, May 7th, Zoom's CEO, Eric Wan, blogged the news of Zoom's latest move for further for furthering the security of their wildly successful, thanks to the coronavirus, teleconferencing platform. Um, uh, and in the URL, I got a kick out of the fact that it's got WordPress in it. It's, it's uh. blog.zoom.us slash WordPress slash blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess so, we know where Zoom's blog is. <laughs> exactly. The title of Eric's posting was, and there's some technical goodies in here, so I'm going to share it with our listeners. Zoom acquires Keybase and announces goal of developing the most broadly used enterprise end-to-end -end encryption offering. He says, we are proud to announce the acquisition of Keybase, another milestone in Zoom's 90-day plan to further strengthen the security of our video conferencing platforms. Since its launch in 2014, Keybase's team of exceptional engineers has built a secure messaging and file sharing service, leveraging their deep encryption and security expertise. We are excited to integrate Keybase's team into the Zoom family to help us build end-to-end -end encryption that can reach current Zoom scalability. This acquisition marks, he says, a key step for Zoom as we attempt to accomplish the creation of a truly private video communications platform that can scale to hundreds of millions of participants while also having the flexibility to support Zoom's wide variety of uses. Our goal is to provide the most privacy possible for every use case while also balancing the needs of our users and our commitment to preventing harmful behavior on our platform. Keybase's experienced team will be a critical part of this mission. He says, today, audio and video content flowing between Zoom clients, for example, Zoom rooms, laptop computers, and smartphones, smartphones running the Zoom app is encrypted at each sending client device. It is not decrypted until it reaches the recipient's devices. With the, re with the recent Zoom 5.0 release, Zoom clients now support encrypting content using industry standard AES GCM, we've talked about this previously, with 256-bit keys. However, the encryption keys for each meeting are generated by Zoom's servers. Additionally, some features that are widely used by Zoom clients, such as support for attendees to call into a phone bridge or use in-room meeting systems offered by other companies, will always require Zoom to keep some encryption keys in the cloud. However, for hosts who seek to prioritize privacy over compatibility, we will create a new solution. Zoom will offer an end-to-end -end encrypted meeting mode to all paid accounts. So that's, that'll be a value add for payment for being a paid account. Logged in users will generate public cryptographic identities that are stored in a repository on Zoom's network and can be used to establish trust relationships between meeting attendees. And of course, all of our podcast listeners who have followed along about public key crypto know how that'll work. That's essentially meaning that Zoom will be a, 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 a database manager for, the, for all um, logged in users' public keys, and that will, allow, um, that, that will allow them to synthesize a key that, that only certain people can get and vice versa. So that he continues, 
uh, you know, basically establishing trust relationships between meeting attendees. He says an ephemeral per meeting symmetric key will be generated by the meeting host. This key will be distributed between clients and enveloped with the asymmetric key pairs and rotated when there are significant changes to the list of attendees. The cryptographic secrets will be under the control of the host and the host's client software will decide what devices are allowed to receive meeting keys and thereby join the meeting. We're also investigating mechanisms that would allow enterprise users to provide additional levels of authentication. These end-to-end -end encrypting encrypted meetings will not support phone bridges, cloud recording, or non-Zoom conference room systems. Zoom rooms and Zoom phone participants will be able to attend if explicitly allowed by the host. Encryption keys will be tightly controlled by the host who will admit attendees. We believe this will provide equivalent or better security than existing consumer end-to-end -end encrypted messaging platforms, but with the video quality and scale that has made Zoom the choice of over 300 million daily meeting participants, including those at some of the world's largest enterprises. And he goes on, blah, blah, blah. But basically, that's the gist of it. So they're essentially creating, using, you know, key bases reputation and certainly their, you know, technology. I'm sure that the, that advisory panel said to Eric, you know, just go buy the, the practical implementation crypto knowledge that you need because you're in a hurry. So just go buy it. And that's what Zoom did. Um, and I, I think it was wise. It, give, it gives them, you know, headlines. Clearly, they're, they're maintaining this momentum they have of m rapidly moving forward to dispel concerns about Zoom's security platform and, and infrastructure. Uh, and, you know, actually offering uh, some new features. The idea that, you know, this is clearly focused on, on a host-centric, a host control of who gets to participate which uh, makes a lot of sense. So anyway, again, I've said several times, bravo to, to Zoom and that, you know, that the steps they're taking would make uh, great material for a business management uh, course in, in business school and, and you know, bravo. Um, yeah, I'm going to miss them because I use them for a variety of services and they're not easily replaced, but... This uh, Keybase, yes. Yeah, Keybase. But I think Zoom will benefit from it. Keybase does well, not, it was did not use... Well, it open source and, and GitHub, right? So Not all of it. Their server side was closed source. But uh, yeah, ah, there's okay. enough open source stuff that somebody could fork it, and I hope they do. Keybase did not do... Initially did what Eric described. They would host your PGP or GPG public key in a centralized key database, much Thus, like the key, key servers do. Yeah. Right. But really, their most interesting thing was something that they eventually turned to, which is device authentication. So that you would use an existing key-based device to add a new key-based device. And there was a chain of trust going through the devices that was very different than the public key, private key mm -hmm. crypto system that they used. I thought that was most interesting. And I wonder if Zoom will do something like that. But we'll see. These guys are very good, I think, very talented crypto guys so i mean they're certainly an asset to uh, zoom and we can yeah, find and so, other things to replace and, key and, and certainly having developed and perfected that that inter-device chain was of clever. trust yeah they would be able to offer it to eric and say yeah. hey you know this is a better got way of doing stuff. it stuff yeah yeah much better way of doing it so anyway we'll see yeah, yeah. very cool